Okay, so this is part two of the network flow program. So in part one, I ended with this augmented matrix. I put this network flow into an augmented matrix, and now I have to solve in order to figure out the general flow of the network diagram. So assuming you already know how to row reduce this, looks like over here, all we have to do to row reduce it is get rid of this negative one. In order to do that, we just have to subtract which you can say um, into row into row five. We're gonna put um, row one or row five plus row one, and that way we get rid of this. We get rid of this negative one under the pivot column of A, and finally then it'll be row reduced because we can know what our um, we can figure out. From doing that, we can figure out what x6 is, right? And from that, we can figure out other other solutions. So assuming that you know how to row this already, I have the solutions over here. So we're going to say x sub 1 equals 100 plus x sub 6 x2 equals x sub 6. So it looks like x6 is our free variable. It's our linearly dependent column. That's why we're not getting a solution for it. It can be anything. But since this is a, since these are one-way streets, we have to keep into account that none of these variables can be negative. Because it's one way, it can't be negative. Says x6, our x sub 4 is equal to negative 70 plus x sub 6. Our x5 is equal to 80 plus x sub 6. And our x sub 6 is our free variable. So a follow-up question they might ask you is that What's the minimum value for x6? Now remember how I just mentioned that since these are one-way streets, it's a roundabout one-way streets, right? It has to be positive. So, and our x6 is free. So our x6 can be anything, but for, our, for this particular situation, it has to be positive. And if you look at each one of these variables, the x6 has to equal at least 70. Because if you look at x4, it says x4 equals negative 70 plus x6. If the x6 equals um, 60, for example, it's going to give us a negative value for x4. And we can't have negative. So if it's at least 70, we're going to be good. So we can write that x sub 6 has to be greater or equal to 70. So if this is satisfied, it is well. This has to be satisfied. If this is not satisfied, you're gonna get an unbalanced, unbalanced uh, diagram. It's gonna be inconsistent. So that has to be true. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this problem. So the most important concept, as with any di network diagram problem, is that you have to realize that total outflow equals total inflow. And that's the most. If you can understand that, the rest of it is pretty simple. Thank you for watching the video. See you guys next time.